Today I thought I'd do a little review of the Triumph Daytona 675. So this is the 2007 Triumph Daytona 675. It has an inline three 675cc engine. This bike fits into the 600cc sport bike class. Um, even though it's a 675, it's kind of like the ZX6R, the newer ones that have the 636 engine, 636ccs. I've owned this motorcycle now for about two months. And in about two months I put, I don't know if you can see that, but it's about 850 miles on it. Or sorry, excuse me, 1,850 miles on it. And I've been pretty impressed. No wave, no wave. Typical Harley rider. Too cool, too cool to wave. Um, so yeah, I've been pretty impressed with the bike. I love the power. One thing about the triple engine is it has a lot more torque than all the other inline fours. If you look at a dyno graph, I might throw it up on the screen. Um, let's say comparing like an R6 to a Triumph. The torque numbers of the Triumph are way higher across the whole board. Um, the power band of this motorcycle is much more linear compared to, let's say, an R6, which has got, you know, you'll see it on the dyno chart, but around 8K RPMs on an R6, the torque curve just skyrockets. Whereas this bike, it has even torque throughout the whole rev range, which I really love. So for example, I'm at about 5K RPMs right now in fourth gear, and if I just roll on the throttle, You know, I made it up to 7K RPMs, but you saw the bike just pulls no matter what gear you're in. Another performance aspect of this motorcycle I like is the handling. Um, this bike really feels like a 300 uh, or a 250 class CC motorcycle. I started out on a Ninja 300 and this bike is very comparable handling wise and uh, I guess weight wise to a 300. You can just put it into a corner and it feels very light. I think this bike weighs around 400 pounds, fully wet. Um, I know that Ninja 300 weighs, I think, 380, somewhere in there. But this bike just loves the corners. It's a fairly aggressive riding position, just like any sport bike would be, but it really does feel comfortable. I mean, my feet are planted on the pegs and my knees, um, they hug the tank pretty well. I'm not too hunched over, I'm not too far leaned back, and if I wanted to get into a full tuck, I'd just scoot back a little bit, and I mean, it's, it's pretty perfect for me. I will say power delivery on this motorcycle is very smooth. Um, even the shifting is just very smooth. Smooth, very, very smooth stuff, very classy. I'm learning a lot from you right now, dude. Um, it's honestly a pretty forgiving motorcycle when it comes to uh, power delivery, um, you know, your shifts. You can mess up a shift and the bike doesn't scream at you or, you know, let you know you did something wrong. So this motorcycle is my dream bike because, not only because of the performance aspects and um, how, how well it performs against its competitors, but also mainly because of how it looks. I'm gonna finish talking about why I like the looks of this motorcycle at the end of this video. Um, right now I'm gonna focus on the only couple cons I've found. The first con about riding this bike is the seat gets really warm because it has an undertail exhaust. Oh, f that was a deer. I don't know if the ca camera saw that one. That's kind of a love-hate relationship I have with this motorcycle because I love the way the undertail exhaust looks on the Triumph, but um, it does get really hot, especially during the summer. Your your butt is like on fire. Another thing I don't like about riding the bike for too long is the vibration in the handlebars gets a little, um, a little much. It's not so bad under about like 8K RPMs, but as soon as you get up to the higher RPMs, the handlebars do vibrate a little bit and that can cause anyone's hands to just kind of go numb after a while. And the last con that I'm going to go over isn't really a con of performance or how the bike looks or acts. 
but it's just kind of a design thing that I'm kind of picky about. So what I noticed was this whole headpiece here and the dash and the, um, the intake are all mounted basically just by the fairings on the left and right side and then by the intake duct. And basically what I don't really like about it is this whole headpiece kind of wiggles around um, when you hit bumps and when you're going fast. Uh, it, it just kind of, it just doesn't, it's not, it's just kind of flimsy. So like I said earlier, the third reason why I bought the Triumph 675 was because I love the way it looks compared to a lot of the other Jap bikes. I think Triumph did a really good job differentiating themselves from all the other imports, um, like the Jap bikes. Just the styling of the bike, the way the lines go together. I think the Triumph 675 definitely has a distinct look to it. So like I mentioned earlier, one of the only negatives I found about this motorcycle besides the undertail exhaust um, routing under the seat and making the seat really warm is basically how this front piece bounces up and down when you hit a bump on the road. And I think that's mainly caused by just a minor design flaw in my eyes. This whole front piece, the dash, and then the ram air duct here are mounted by what used to be a plastic shroud that went around the duct to the frame to these two holes on this side and then there's two holes on the other side and by two screws on the fairings right here and then over here. I'm not the original owner of this motorcycle, so I really don't know what happened to my plastic shroud, but basically um, what ended up happening was um, this broke off and so I had to fabricate and mount my uh, airbox ram air intake to the frame by uh, some metal and rivets here. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, leave me a like or comment below.